to a brand new episode of Social Life right here on Rogers TV. We're your host, Ksenia Spock. And I'm Stephanie Larrero. If you guys are just joining us, we talk about all things trending, from the latest tech gadgets to the world of entertainment. Welcome back. Welcome back. A new episode, new show. Feeling great? That's right. And let's kick off the show with something that's trending right now. So there are two types types of people around the holidays, I find. Okay. Those that play Christmas music literally on November 1st, and those of us who don't. <laughs> yup. So this started trending recently okay. on November 1st. Hashtag Christmas music right away. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I don't get, okay, like, Halloween was just the day before. How are we going from Halloween to Christmas music. I don't know, but people were tweeting about it with the hashtag Christmas music. Um, they're talking about how it's their favorite time of year and it's never too early. Here's one tweet. Never too early? Never. And it's in sync's vinyl CD. Or I guess vinyl, not CD. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and here's another one here, Wilson Phillips, who's a band, and they're promoting their music. A lot of actually radio stations were doing this too. They're saying, like, tune in to us, we play Christmas music starting November first. Yeah, I saw that on my Instagram. Some people were posting their favorite radio stations saying, Oh my god, I love this station, they're playing Christmas music. But you know, did we forget that there's Remembrance Day in between? Like I've I've seen some tweets on Twitter that people or people are saying that after Remembrance Day, it's okay to play then holiday you celebrate. and Christmas music, but you gotta, you know, pay tribute and respect. I agree completely, and I think I get so tired of listening to it. Like I love those songs so much, and so many are classics. Um, so I'd wanna, I wanna save them for December, maybe late November, so I don't get sick of them, and I'm ready next right. year. So that means you're not one of those people that on November first, no, you're not. blasting out Mariah Carey, and we're listening to her holiday album. No, I'm not one of those people. How about you? No. No, I don't think I play that music until like the day before the Christmas, day before Christmas. Christmas, probably. Because I mean, I love Christmas, but just the idea of winter, you know what? I have my summer music and I play it a little bit all year long. You it never do. gets old. You really never let go of your summer music. I know. But if you are those people who play Christmas music, you know, just don't play it too early because you know when stores start to sell Christmas stuff too early, we're just, we're, you know, let's not be ahead of the game. Wait be, for Remembrance Day. Be right in the game. Be in the game. And speaking of Christmas and the holidays, something really cool that's coming to town. It's not just Santa Claus, guys. Uh, that was a good one. About that. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, we're, so we're less than two months away from Christmas. <laughs> and if you want to get into the Christmas spirit, there's a new winter festival coming to Ooh. town. And we talked about it on our very first show that this place was named one of Time Magazine's 100 Greatest Places in 2019. And I'm sure it'll live up to its status because Canada's Wonderland is launching a new winter festival. There it is. That's the promo. It looks great. They have costumes, so many cool things, which include 5 million holiday lights, festive decor, three 15-meter high Christmas trees. Now, wow. this festival will launch on November 22nd. Ooh, so is that not too early for you? You'll come with me to Winterfest? Ah, oh, fine. I'll come with you to Winterfest. It looks really cool. It's going to be trending. I know people are going to be going taking lots of pictures and there's so many things you can do there's gonna be an ice skating rink i read that it's gonna be really big do you like Ooh, skating i do like skating i'd be interested in doing that so you can go skate go skating there's a tree lighting ceremony very pretty live holiday shows performances select family rides there's so much you can do and the park is actually separated into eight kind of worlds oh. so one will be like Santa Claus and one, I mean, I'm not too sure of them, but they're going to be different kinds of activities at each station. So now mm. they're only, this park or this festival will only be open from November 22nd to December 31st on select okay. days. Most of them are weekends, so you can, if you do have some free time during your weekend, you can pick a date and go. And closer to the holidays, at the Christmas time, it's actually going to be going all week long. Oh, that's so fun. Which is awesome. So if you have time during the break, you should definitely go friends, family, your kids. That's wonderful. So now tickets start $21.99. Not okay, bad, not bad. But if you're a 2019 or 2020 gold or platinum season pass holder, it's free for you. So oh, why not go? Nice. Another incentive to buy a season pass. So are you going to go? Are, you, are we going to go check it out? I think so. I want to go. Will you go with me? I'll go with you. Yeah, I want to go. Okay, awesome. We're going to go. <laughs> but right now, let's take a look at what's trending in news. Hey Social Life, my name is Sujula and let me tell you a story about how a camera company tried to make a smartphone and it did not go how they expected it to go. So maybe you're familiar with camera companies, maybe you've heard of Sony, Canon, Nikon, but have you heard of a company called Red? Well Red Digital Cinema is a high-end camera company that makes 
high-end cameras for high-end use, such as professional movies and TV shows. And movie companies especially use their cameras for their high-quality video. Now, if you were bragging to your friend on how your new iPhone shoots 4K video at 60 frames per second, well, the RED cameras can shoot video in up to 8K quality. That's four times the resolution of 4K. Now, they're a great camera company, highly recommended by many professionals, but Back in 2018, they tried to make a smartphone. Yes, a smartphone just like the iPhone, but it was going to be much better. One of its most unique features was the modular design that allows you to add modules to enhance the experience of the device, aka you can add a camera module and record higher quality video with the camera. And its staple feature was going to be its display. Now regular phones, they have a 2D display, you know, sometimes up to 4K resolution, but this phone was going to have a 3D holographic display. The display was supposed to be a 5.7 inch 1440p 3D display. And like I said, unlike the 2D displays on regular smartphones, Red was going to innovate a 3D display onto their smartphone. And the best part is, you didn't even need 3D glasses. The best way to describe it is the content on the screen is supposed to float above the display when the 3D mode is active, giving it a really cool and immersive feeling. However, in terms of features, that's pretty much all this phone had to offer. For 850 Canadian dollars, the phone was disappointing to say the least. It lacked many features of the other smartphones in 2018 and the modular design was kind of useless because Red really never came out with any modules for it. They definitely had some work to do so when this phone was released in November of 2018, yeah people were hyped up but when they announced that they're working on a version 2.0 then people started getting curious and started getting excited seeing what could be in store for Red. But on October 24th, Red's founder Jim Jannard retired and Red put a close to their hydrogen project. And this was disappointing to say the least. Red was a camera company where they had their name out there in the world, people knew who they were, and this was a chance for them to hop into a new market and make a smartphone. Something to compete with, you know, the iPhone and Samsungs of today. But I guess for now, we'll have to wait. And that's everything you need to know about Red and their potentially amazing smartphone. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much, Sanjula, for your tech report. I had no idea this was happening. I didn't even know the co about the company Red, so this was great to see. The phone looks crazy. I know. I'm I, I'm sad that they're not making the phone. I know, but can you really compete with these brands like Apple? I guess and not. They're so Samsung. they're such like long-standing brands. The cameras are incredible, though. I will say that. Okay. I'm yeah. sorry. Oh I don't gosh. even know what that looks like. I know. I mean, 4K is crazy. I just, I could just only imagine like the size of the. Your SD card, it's gonna be huge. I mean, for yeah, those, those files, those files, yeah. files. But I mean, if you're trying to shoot a beautiful movie, there you go. You need Very that. cool camera. But for right now, let's see what's making headlines in news. Every restaurant menu these days has this on their menu. Okay. Truffle fries. Ooh. Uh, I know, and we all know that they're delicious, but what we may not know is that odds that you're eating real truffle oil on your fries is very low. Okay. Most of the stuff is actually made with synthetic ingredients. Like what? There's this one ingredient called 24 dash I can't pronounce this. <laughs> <laughs> Dithapentane. Okay. That's how it is. Um, and it's an aromic molecule that gives truffles their distinctive smell. So this makes you feel like you're eating truffle oil and it smells like truffle oil, but it's not real truffles. Oh my gosh, you know what that just reminds me? It's like what they do with leather. Sometimes they make it smell like it's real. Yeah, but it's not. But it's so not. It's the same thing. And we're actually consuming these products, which is even worse. Exactly. It's all, it's just a chemical. It's not really truffles. So if you look at your bottle, this is a good way to tell, it should actually say truffles on the ingredients list. And if it doesn't, then you're probably looking at a fake oil. Okay, so it's got to say truffles. It's got to say truffles. Now, obviously, you can't ask the restaurant and, like, check their oil. But when you're trying to buy it in the store and get it for yourself at home, like, it's good. It's a good practice to make sure you're getting the real thing. Oh, yeah, it's good, to, it's good to know uh, what kind of ingredients are in your oil. Mm -hmm. Especially, I guess it's a good thing to look out for, the word truffle. And I love truffle oil. We actually went to Italy this summer, and we tried truffle oil on our wine tour. And yeah. it was amazing. I wish I could just take all those bottles now <laughs> home with me. Like, I brought a small bottle home and went by. It went so fast, so good. I know, it's so good. And ever since we got back from Italy, we've been trying to find a similar version here in stores. And we haven't been able to. I think that's one of the conversations we have a lot is, like, where can I buy truffle oil that tastes the same? And I guess this is why it doesn't taste the same. It's because, probably synthetic. Because it ain't real. 
truffle oil, like truffles in general, have a very high price tag. Black truffles yeah. are only found in France, and real white truffles are only found in Italy. Right. And they're super rare, and the process to find them is really hard, and that's why they're so expensive. Um, so that's why kind of it's kind of hard to get, and that's why people make these synthetic truffle oils. Right. So do we know what kind of companies are using? Is it just all restaurants that are using this fake truffle oil? It's hard to tell. Like some of them do use real truffle oil, but it's it's just the prices just don't equate to right. the, the price that it should be for the fries yeah. when you're having real truffle oil on your fries. Right, you're right. Even when we were in Europe, I remember seeing the price with of truffles with your food in it. Like, it was a big price It was tag. expensive. It was regular pasta, and there's some truffles, and it made it like the price of a steak. Yeah, yeah So right. I think look for price as well to make sure you're kind of eating the real deal. Yeah. And uh, people, a lot of people assume that truffles are like mushrooms, okay. and although, although they're also funguses, they're not related to mushrooms at all. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. I thought I thought, like, I thought there was a mushroom. No, they're not in the same family. They look completely different, and they taste completely different to mushrooms. Oh, well, they taste amazing. They taste amazing, guys, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> oh, that's a very interesting story. Definitely look out for that truffle label mm -hmm. on your bottle. And another big thing also making some headlines in the news is Airbnb. They are planning to ban their party houses. Oh. Have you heard about the story? Um, a little bit. All right. So the CEO of Airbnb, Brian Chesky, he actually announced this on Twitter that the company will be banning these party houses and getting rid of abusive hosts following a deadly shooting that broke out during a Halloween party in Orinda, California. So on Halloween, renters, they threw a party attended by over 100 guests, despite the host actually stating no parties are allowed on the property. Oh, wow. I don't know how it goes. A lot of people say no parties allowed on my property. People still do it anyway. You try to sneak in your friends right but this a hundred people and unfortunately five people were fatally shot after a gunfire broke out wow so yeah and something similar happened here in Ontario I don't know if I you remember heard, I heard the prom, about this yeah after prom party similar once again Airbnb rented out house something happened and someone passed away, someone died. Yeah. So these things are happening, it's becoming an issue. So on Saturday, November 2nd, the CEO took to Twitter that they're gonna plan to implement a system that will screen and flag these high risk reservations and they will be taking immediate action against users who violate guest policies. But right now, they don't know exactly how they are gonna do that. Mm -hmm. Because it's hard to tell, it's hard to crack down on um, the renters, what they're planning to do, right? But they did say that if you, you know, if they find out you're gonna have a party, that's it. They're they're cracking coming down and on they're you. cracking down. You won't get your deposit. You won't get any money back. I'm, I'm not even sure. Maybe they might find you. Who knows? It's, it's so, it's so hard to control though, and I think it's going to be really hard to, to assess like who's in your house. And even if you're, if you're a renter and you don't want parties, it's really hard to know who's coming into your house, who they're bringing. Unless you have yeah. cameras installed, there's really no way of knowing. There is no way of knowing. And I know sometimes if you do go through the Airbnb listings, they explicitly say no party. If I catch you, if there's more than four people, because under your reservation you said four people, there's more than four people, we're kicking you out. You're not getting your deposit back. So they're, you know, you know renters, I guess, are putting these rules in. Mm -hmm. Then when it comes down to guests, are they actually following Are them. They actually That's following? the thing. Yeah, and it, it's, it's like again, it's scary because it's happened like like we just mentioned in Ontario too. It's not you know it happens in the states, happens here. So it's really good that Airbnb is bringing this up. They are cracking it down. Uh, do you use Airbnb? I do use Airbnb. I've used Airbnb a lot of times. We actually booked our Europe trip all through Airbnb, and it was really helpful. I think it's a great way to travel. You have lots more space, um, and even for staying downtown for a night to like go go for a birthday. Something okay. Like that. Yeah, it's it's great. Great. Off, but we have to wrap up, so we're going to be right back. Hello, guys, welcome back to the social life. Now, while we're here in the studio, platinum selling artist Tyler Shaw is on tour across Canada. We actually caught up with him right before he hit the stage in Richmond Hill to chat about his Juno nominated album, Life on the Road, and much more. Let's take a look. First of all, we want to say congratulations. You're doing so well. Oh, You're doing thank on you. tour. Thank and you you're so single much. with you. It went platinum it this did, year. It did. And the YouTube views are crazy. 23 million. Yeah. How does that feel? Um, it feels amazing. Um, I couldn't have asked for anything more. You know, the support that is shown around the world has been um, spectacular. So I'm, I'm very, very happy about that. Yeah. And another great thing, this album that you're touring with, Intuition, mm -hmm. it got you a Juno nomination. Yes, it did. So that's yeah. amazing. It's not your first one, right? It's not my first one. Um, back in 20, 
2014, I believe, I was nominated for Breakthrough Artist of the Year. Um, but Intuition, having the Pop uh, Pop Album of the Year nomination has been uh, super, super amazing because I, I poured everything I had into that album. Um, so to have it be recognized on that level is definitely something special. And now you're touring, and I believe there's yeah. 21 <laughs> cities across all of Canada. Yeah. How do you keep the energy up so high every show? Um, you know, the fans make it easy. Um, you know, you step out on stage and, and they're given tons of energy, so you feed off of that and it's just a game, uh, in my mind, it's a game that me and the fans play. It's like, you give me some, I give you some, and then together we're just um, having this tornado of, of positive, fun energy. So. so the fans, they kind of really give you the energy and then you give it back. Exactly, yeah. And you're touring with Neon Dreams and yeah. Craig Stickland totally. as well, so yeah. how's it like being on the road with them? They are amazing guys. They bring such a cool vibe uh, to, the, to the stage, uh, very uh, versatile in, the, in their music and their movements. Um, it's just a fun hang, it's just a bunch of, bunch of guys out on the road, you know, just having fun, so it's good, yeah. And what is your favorite song from your album to perform live? I really enjoy, I really have a lot of fun with Overthink. Um, that's probably, probably my favorite song to perform live, yeah. Nice. Yeah. And you said before, your fans give you energy. Yeah. Your fans are so loyal and so amazing. They are, yes. Is there anything crazy that a fan has done for you that you can share? Um, I know a few of them have gotten me gifts before. Oh, nice. Um, which, it's not crazy, <laughs> but it's, it's something yeah. special. You know, they've baked me some uh, baked goods before, so it's all just like heartwarming oh, uh, that's stuff. Very sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the best. They're the best. Yeah. Awesome. And can you tell us about your newest single to the Man of Letter, though? Totally. Um, yeah, that one was very special to write. Um, you know, when you when you think about a breakup and when you think about a breakup in general, it's usually very negative and very like, oh, screw that person or whatever. But I wanted to kind of take a different approach and, and make it more of a positive spin and be like, hey, thank you, um, instead of being like, screw you. Yeah. Right. All the comments on YouTube, we're reading them over, and everyone, you know, they're like, oh, thankful. For, I'm so glad the man who ever like, let yeah, go of my yeah. girl or whatever. So, <laughs> exactly. you know, they resonate. They resonate exactly. with the song. Yeah. yeah, like, it was so funny to read the comments, actually. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, people yeah. were throwing in their own personal stories. Yeah, Hilarious. that's what it's all about, right? If, you, if people can relate to the music, then that's all I can ask for, for sure. Yeah. You and Craig Stickland, you just released a cover of Tequila with yeah. Dan and Shay. Yes. Uh, so, what drew you to that? Um, I love that song. I love that song so much, uh, just everything about it. Uh, and so when I decided to go to Alberta and Saskatchewan, country provinces, the prairies, um, I was like, maybe I'll do a, a country cover. And that's the one, obviously, I chose because I loved it so much. That's awesome. Yeah. And you posted, I saw on IGTV. I did, yes. Instagram, yes. huge platform right now, totally. probably the number one. Yep. Have you ever had some weird or cool celebrity encounters on Instagram at all? On Instagram? Um, actually, do you know the fitness uh, model, Kayla? It's oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. How do you pronounce her last name? Itness, I think. Itness? I think it's something it's like that. I, I thought it was Itness. Anyway, I she know. actually used her, uh, uh, she, in her engagement video, she used With You. Um, oh. So she posted that on Instagram, and when I saw that, I messaged her, and she messaged back, and we had a little convo going. So that's really that was cool. pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Nice. That's a perfect song for that. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Right. And so what is next for you? Releasing more music, a new album, perhaps? Yeah, I mean, when the tour is done, I'm headed out to L.A. to start the project on the third album, uh, start writing for that project there. Um, and then this Christmas, I'm coming out with the Christmas song. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. And then I'm actually going to be dropping a little something at the end of January 2020. Oh, so oh very, very cool. Soon. So I think everybody should keep their eyes locked yes. on your Instagram account yeah, that we're yeah. talking exactly, about it. Exactly. Well, good luck on your show Thank today. You. And best Thank of luck for the rest of your tour. My pleasure. Thanks. Well, Tyler Shaw, really great guy, great interview. We actually got to uh, listen a little bit to him, his, uh, what's it called? Sound check. The sound check. I'm like, what's the word? His sound check. I love his songs. They're always classics. They get stuck in your head. Yeah, they, they're hits on the radio, that's for sure. He's yeah. platinum selling. And he's actually, I know that he's releasing some Christmas kind of music. Yeah. Right? So it's exciting. Take a look at his social media. There might even be a track up right now. Yeah. Um, another story that's trending in entertainment is all about Spider-Man. This one's really exciting to me. Okay. So basically, Into the Sony released this movie called Into the Spider-Verse, which is an right. animated series that has a different take on the traditional Spider-Man story. Um, and they finally announced that they're going to be giving it a sequel. Okay. Yeah, now the film is actually Oscar winning. So that's how good it is. Is it? I know. Oh, wow. Well, okay. um, it's because of this crazy animation style. So if you'll take a look at this clip we're showing right now, oh, um, it's like this bright, bold colors, this, this very good kind of comic book-esque style. It is. It's really beautiful. 
So, but unfortunately, they're taking so long to make it because of this amazing yeah. style. Um, it's going to come out in April uh, 2022. 2022? So, yeah. So a long time. Oh my gosh, that's like two years. I know. And without giving too much away, um, I, like I said before, it kind of gives a new spin on this traditional wow. story. So what happens is Miles Morales is our Spider-Man in this film. Um, basically, he gets bitten by a radioactive spider, you know, the drill. Right. But then he encounters all these other Spider-Mans from different direct dimensions. They're Spider-People, I should say. They're not just Spider-Men. <laughs> <laughs> there's Spider-Gwen, there's Spider-Ham, a pig. Spider-Gwen? Yeah, there's oh a gosh. bunch of different Spider-Mans. You should watch it. It's really good. I should, yeah, I don't, I don't know much, too much about Spider-Man, you know, I'm guilty. I know. But this, this looks really cool. It is really cool. And basically, all the different characters, they have to fight to get back to their dimension. There's a teaser that Sony dropped. Ooh, That's all we've got right now. That's all we got, So we're not really sure what's going to be happening, but we're assuming that it's going to be great. And they'll be a big adventure, and they'll save the world like they always do. You're right. And I, and I have a feeling you're going to go watch it. I know that for sure. I am. <laughs> I am, you know. And speaking of watching, you know what? Let's go see what is vile right now. All right, this next story will pull at your heartstrings. So Carrie Bloat, she's a mom to the 21-year-old autistic boy, and she wrote the following on Twitter. I don't know if we have a tweet that we can pull up to show everybody, uh, but she basically wrote, my 21-year-old autistic son has no communication skills. Today he asked me his first question ever. Aww. It was, would someone like me? Aww. Right? So her son is homeschooled because he has a severe uh, immunodeficiency disorder and he needs to be isolated from kids to prevent any infections. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's all, his mom said that he's always asking if he's, you know, he, he's always asking whether he's going to have friends. He's sees people playing outside, but he doesn't know how to interact, he doesn't know how to create those bonds and uh, those friendships. And so since, because she uses her Twitter account, she's an active user, she kind of posts these, um, and her, twi tw her tweet, her tweet, <laughs> has since exploded, getting over 70,000 likes wow. and 5,000 retweets, so Twitter went crazy, and messages poured in from people all over the world who wanted to let David feel Less alone. So here's one, right? It's a, it says, David, my name is Ross. This is my son, Lincoln. He's a seven-year-old, and he's also autistic. We would love to be your friend. Oh, that's right? so, sweet. That is so sweet. I love this. Another one, tell David he has a friend from London, and my family much love. So Aww. everyone went out. They supported it, posting such nice, and such nice tweets. Um, and Carrie, the mom, said the responses have been overwhelming. She stayed up all night with David, reading all the messages. She showed him all the love, all the responses responses, all the gifts, all the pictures, and she said that she's never seen him smile that much. Like, he barely talks. She said, she said that he rarely says anything. He rarely shows emotion. So she said just to see him smile, it brings tears to her eyes. It brings her joys. Uh, she shared a photo of David. You know, he, he wrote a little cute letter. He, he wrote, thank you, friends, for liking me. Aww, just so sweet. This is so sweet. And this incredible affection, it has the mom, you know, in her feels. And she, she says that she hopes that there's someone out there with a big enough heart to love her son as much as her and her husband do. Oh, that's so sweet. I love this story, and I love that. I love using the internet for good. Yeah. Um, Any time that we can kind of build each other up, and Twitter is a great place to do that as it well. It is, yeah. And let's be kind to people. You know what? Let's be kind. November, we're getting, it's cold. I know it's getting dark outside, but don't forget, let's be Keep kind the light. to one or Keep the light. Keep the sun in your personalities. <laughs> yes. And now another thing that has gone viral. The ABCs. Oh. Do you remember singing the ABCs, you know? Absolutely, I, I do. Mean, I, st I still know them. <laughs> well, I, Didn't go anywhere. I hope you do because, you know, you kind of use it every day in your life. Yeah. But the alphabet song, the ABC a song, C this is it. So let's take a listen. F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T. Oh. So you see the change? Yeah, what? Yeah, so did you, w so usually when we sing y the ABCs, yeah. towards the LMNOP, that's how we say it. Yeah. LMNOP. LMNOP. LMNOP, yeah. right, Q -R, -S. Q R S. But here, it was a very different approach. It was yeah. like L M N O P Q. O -P -Q. Wow. So this song, 
I mean, the Alphabet Song. It's been a classic since 1830. Oh. You know how long we've been singing that is a long time. You know how long kids learn to stumble over th that little that little part and it's yeah. funny because you're like, oh, I don't get it. I love it. Yeah. It's a kid, right? It's so cute. But now, all of a sudden, Dream English, which is a children's English teaching website, they make educational videos that's enjoyable to listen. They decided to remix this version, but this is kind of a cool part of the story, I guess. This was remixed back in 2012. Oh, really? And, and only we're, seven it's just years. just going viral now. Yeah, it's just going viral now. Somebody found it. You know, that's how it always happens. Yeah. Something was posted like 20 years ago. And they dig it up. You dig it up. You post it on Twitter. Everybody goes crazy. It got over 109 thousand likes 28,000 retweets and those likes let me tell you those likes don't mean people support it people are outraged they're mad. Yeah, everybody's oh. getting so mad I, th I feel like they're uh, messaging the dream English account on Instagram on Twitter being like guys take it down what do you think you're doing you know how we talk about being kind to one another <laughs> this is not one of the ways this to do it not one of those things so one of those things have been trending right now we actually got to wrap up our show but before we go we want to be kind to our sponsor niche decor for their wonderful accessories they have two unique showrooms in new market in aurora with all your furniture and decor needs check out their website nichedecor.ca or their instagram page and we'll be back next time with more social life see you guys next time